Well, the shooter has been identified, of course, as Omar Mateen. Uh, in one of the early press conferences around 7 a.m. this morning, uh, you had an FBI official uh, say that uh, early leads suggest that he was motivated by jihadist ideology, but they also uh, caveated that by making sure that people understood it was very early in the process. Uh, you have a, a profile of him start to emerge, though um, one should always uh, be cautious because there's a fog of war effect this early close to violent incidents. For example, there are several different people in the country named Omar Mateen. As far as I know, you don't have an official picture that's been released yet. And so uh, I'd be cautious of um, people uh, having some sort of mistaken identities in the process and in that way, bad information gumming up the works. And, and actually, we have had one photograph that's been released. I think that's been put on air, uh, Debbie, just a few minutes ago. You're an expert in counterterrorism. You've been involved in this kind of an investigation. What uh, officials looking for in these early hours what what are the critical things in this in these first few hours after an attack that they're going to try to be understanding yeah, the, the photograph, by the way, is from his MySpace page, and I could sh uh, point you um, after this segment's done to several other photographs that are there. The one thing I'd caution is that in looking at the MySpace page, there's nothing that identifies him with Florida, so I still have a little bit of a question as to whether people are jumping to conclusions about who it is. That being said, everybody is reaching that same conclusion. In terms of what authorities are going to be doing, they're going to be looking for um, a, his electronic trail. Um, one of the highest priorities is, does he have other associates who, um, if, they're, if the terrorism lead ends up being uh, the truest one, are there other associates who could also pose a danger to the community? How, how deeply does this go? Who knew? Where did he get his weapons from? Uh, those will be the kind of questions that they're pursuing, both in terms of honing in on a motive, but m more to the point, uh, trying to protect uh, the public from anything else that could pose an immediate danger to them. Okay, David, stay with us. We're going to hear now from Regina Vajanath, and she's down there uh, in Florida, uh, outside where this attack took place. Uh, Regina, what's the scene down there at the moment? Well, Kathy, I've just arrived here a few minutes ago, um, but as you can probably see, if I just move the camera down a bit, uh, there is a police cordon here, lots of media as well, um, and it's about uh, two or three blocks from where I'm actually standing uh, that the nightclub is at. And uh, as you've probably been reporting through your coverage, but it is clear from being on the ground here that there is a state of emergency here. And of course, a police investigation, which continues, um, many of the victims are still unidentified. So uh, local agencies here are urging people to call their hotlines and get in touch with them. Um, and as you can probably hear, um, above me are a number of police helicopters here. So understandably, a very huge police presence here um, in a city that now has a state of emergency. Regini, there have been calls for people to give blood. What's the response been down there to that? And what do we know, if anything, about the status of the people who are injured and in hospital? Well, um, on the uh, local radio station, as I was traveling here in a taxi, I heard um, people talking about the blood donations. Um, I heard people saying that there are very long queues. I haven't witnessed them myself as yet, but long queues, people um, donating blood um, at nearby blood banks. And I have to confirm this, but I heard as well on the local radio, Kathy, that uh, they have lifted a ban on gay people donating blood, which um, from what they were saying on the local radio here had been in place and that has now been lifted. So um, anyone can give blood here in Orlando. And of course, uh, uh, as you were, have been talking about about in your coverage as well as the 50 who have lost their lives in this attack. There are more than 50 who are injured, many in a critical condition. Now we are expecting another update from the FBI and from the local hospitals in about an hour or so um, after the president has spoken. So we will hopefully get a more clearer idea about how those people who are being treated in hospital are getting on. Right, and we understand that the White House also contacted hospital officials to allow them to restrict, uh, lift restrictions on hospitals contacting family members that the United States has in place um, as well. Uh, Regini, give me just some sense of the context of where you are. Orlando, a lot of people from around the world who are watching this program will know it, of course, associated uh, with amusement parks. They may even have been on holiday there. Uh, g give me some sort of feel for, for where you are and the kind of neighborhood that this club is in. 
Yes, well, this is Orlando. Um, of course, as you say, Kathy, a place that many families visit to travel to Disney and uh, other attractions here like Universal Studios. It is a family focused place. Um, somewhere that you wouldn't expect something like this to happen. But of course, we say that every time these things happen because this is such a tragedy of huge proportions, the worst mass shooting to happen in the United States. But, you know, just to give you an idea, normally on the flights to Orlando, if we travel um, to Orlando for work, you will see lots of families. Um, this is um, seen as a very safe and, as I say, family-friendly area, very popular with people from around the world, um, including, of course, from places like the UK. So it is a part of America that many people from outside do actually know of and have heard of. Um, Regini, what's the security situation there at the moment? You mentioned that there's a police cordon. Were you, as you flew into Orlando, was there a stepped up police presence? Does there seem to be uh, extra security on the streets of the city? I wonder if I could just, if I may, I'm just holding my phone, but if I may switch this round, if it's possible to do so, Catty. Uh, there you go. I will just give you a quick tour of what we can see. So. That's the end of the road there from which I approached. Two police officers, two sheriffs there, um, not letting anyone down. And then, of course, a large number of the media and police tape. More media just around here, Cathy. But if you look further down this road, there are a number of cars. And I was told by the police sheriffs who I was talking to. That's the governor, by the way, Governor Scott. He was just leaving in a car. He's been talking to the media here. Uh, he's just uh, speeding off in his car. But um, there are lots of people, investigators, um, I, I would imagine FBI agents um, and police officers as well, who are the owners of those cars which are further down. And um, just from where you're looking at this image now, um, it's about two blocks on the left, I was told, um, that uh, is where the nightclub is. So the cordon actually does run quite far back. Um, I've covered a number of these kinds of shootings and um, they always do make us stand very far back, of course, because this is an active police investigation. Um, so it's difficult to really know what is going on, but it's clear from the scale of this and from how far we've been made to, to uh, actually stand back that this is a huge police operation. And when the police delivered their press conference earlier, they certainly said that they had had help from forces across the United States. And I can imagine now, of course, given that there is the possibility that this is a terror attack and they are investing that, investigating that as a possible line of inquiry, that uh, as well as that, uh, there will be an international um, dimension to the investigation. Um, as I said to you uh, just then, though, we are expecting to hear from the FBI um, in the next hour or so. And I'll just uh, show you here, there is actually a lectern here, Cathy, which is where the police press conference will take place. Um, it says courage, pride and commitment for um, Orlando. So uh, this is where the police press conferences will take place. And just to remind viewers who might just be joining us, I'm at the scene uh, a few streets away from where um, America's deadliest mass shooting took place yesterday, just after 2 a.m. Um, and 50 people have been confirmed dead. Um, more than 50 also injured in this attack. And there are um, also about 30 people, we understand, who were actually rescued after what police described as a hostage type incident. Uh, more people walking towards the scene there, but we are still behind this police cordon, uh, waiting, of course, to get more information from the police. I'll just uh, move that back round so we can share that uh, with our viewers. Um, but uh, they did say earlier, police said that uh, they have now secured the nightclub, so they don't believe that there are any devices or explosives in the nightclub. And uh, as far as they are aware, there is no imminent threat of another attack. But of course, um, America is on a state of vigilance. Um, uh, I understand as high as it was after 9-11. So, but that is something that you know is uh, already in place. Uh, no. Uh, sense of an imminent threat here in Orlando after yesterday's horrific attack.